failure will help you achieve more successes because it will put you in touch with that which you have to work at. So when you fail, you will have to face, you have to face your weaknesses because you have to face the failure. By facing the weaknesses, you get to learn and overcome it and get to more successes. But for this last week, I had no passion. I had no inspiration. I had no God helping me out to give me some creativity. And that made me realize what this episode should be about. The one actress in the world that all of the acting coaches and acting gurus and acting directors over time went to observe in life or on screen was the Italian actress Eleonora Duse. The story goes that she was in a play that she did over and over and over again, talking about taking another take, doing another take, doing another performance. And what was so absolutely brilliant about what she was able to do before the method, before Stanislavski, before Grotowski, before she was able to instinctually, organically come to a scene in the play where she, as the adult, meets in the script her lover, her first lover, her innocent first love. He approaches, she approaches him every time on that particular moment, sees him, she blushes physically, her face gets red, pink, rosy, because of the innocence that's being brought up in her seeing this lover from her youth. And it is spectacular. How is she able to do that? One time you can blush when you're doing the one take or you're doing the performance. Okay, that's an accident. It happened. But how do you depend on it as an actor to be able to recreate that same blush of the cheeks, bring up the innocence in yourself First, you have to bring it up as the actor, meaning as the person before the character, because you are the character. It's not like you're putting the character to the side and you're coming as the actress and you're saying, um, Eleonora, do you say, uh, let me just call for my character. Come over character. No, there's no character outside of yourself. It's you. You're the instrument that's bringing the life of the script. Which of the techniques must she have used to recreate that blush, that innocence that would raise into her cheeks and give her that sensation of youth in the first kiss. Kiss me, my first kiss. My lips have not been touched. Tools, right, using our senses because that's how we have to live everyday life. We have to live due to how our senses respond to things around us. And that's the same way that you have to live on stage or in front of the camera. You have to recreate living as if you're living it in everyday life. You have to recreate the living. So the senses have to be involved. Now, if I'm bringing him, like I said, I'm bringing him into the picture. He's taller than me, good looking. And now I remember him looking down at me, even though I was tall, I wasn't as tall as he was. So that was one thing that I also like looked up approaches, kisses my lips, give myself a second and leave myself alone and not judge myself and think, oh my God, the people that are going to see this video are going to think I'm completely crazy. That's what's going on in my head right now, but I'm going to put that to the side. Those thoughts, I want them to go away, go away, go away, go away. But this is what creativity is. It's re-experiencing. The art of acting became the art of experiencing at the actor studio. So you have to experience as if it's happening in the moment. I feel that his face is approaching my face. I feel that he is, I have to shut up so he can kiss me. My lips were so much more beautiful at that time. They were plumber, they were red. And now he's approaching my lips and he's kissing me. And I can feel it. And I'm getting butterflies, I'm getting butterflies. But I could not believe that even after years, 
we looked at each other and I had such a hard time looking at him. I was so shy. I was still that little girl, that little young girl that was kissed for the first time by him. And I couldn't bring myself to actually directly make eye contact. I would probably use that particular person to try to recreate if I had to blush on stage or in front of a camera. Because even now as I'm thinking it, it's not enough that you're thinking it, but you have to sensorially go there again and relive it. So if I'm reliving it, just the closing of my eyes like I did and leaning my head back because he was taller, like I said, and just breathing and focusing on my breath right now and imagining and feeling his face coming closer to my face and then him just kissing me. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit revealing. So that kind of also on top of reliving the experience, just the fact that I'm sharing it with you guys, being that it's so revelatory, you know, it's like who wants to close their eyes and imagine that they're being kissed when there's no other person there. It also brings into the situation a sort of a loneliness, a sort of nostalgia because so many years went by. The fact that life turned out probably different than what you have expected. And I'm not saying that it's worse or better, but the additional elements that come to recreating that event are all beautiful, complex human elements that can be distributed to the character that you are actually portraying. So the fact that the blushing would happen if I had to play the same scene, but with the blushing would also come a little bit of sadness due to nostalgia. I'm sure that Eleonora Duse was probably going through so many different emotions. It wasn't just one emotion. So that's what's so beautiful about acting because it requires of us to accept ourselves as the instrument that we have to play the instrument with all our expressions and our history and our people from our life are notes that you kind of have to play and rearrange depending on what the character is requiring of you. It's such a, it's such a gift when you really truly understand acting and what it does, not just for actors, but for any other person of other professions for people think it's also great for public speakers because they learn how to involve the audience in the way that they share their speeches it's good for politicians it's good for lawyers it's good for i say it's good for everyone because the training is one of social and emotional learning, which is what makes us understand each other as people so much better so we can communicate better. The language of, oh, I have to tap into the greatness and search for the greatness in myself because I cannot bring the character down to me thinking that I'm not great. So I have to rise up to the greatness in the character is something that will make you understand that it's helping you self-improve. It's helping you evolve into a better, kinder person. So that education that the acting requires is so palpable and needed for people in the world to be better communicators with each other. So they can recall the common elements that we all have as humans, tuning our instruments from the outside in, from the inside out. The soul, we have to exercise our soul, the exercises for the soul, to paraphrase Stanislavski, are exactly what I've described right now. Having to go back into the past, not as something that you want to live in, but to go into it and to see an event as the one that I described and how and what else comes with it now that you as an adult are reliving it. What else are you going to find that happened 
in that little girl, in that beautiful young girl, Mihaela, plus the life experience brought to it, what will reveal that will make you be able to bring the complex humanity to the character and at the same time applaud yourself for what you have been able to create and to be. So it's not self-indulgent. It's not like, oh, I'm going to think of my life. I'm going to go back into my life and it's always about me. If you're thinking of it in a way that then you can be of service with, to, for instance, my actors that I work with as an acting coach, when I demonstrate to them what I demonstrated to you right now, they will be able to feel a little bit more secure in the environment to leave themselves alone and to participate and to demonstrate and to put in practice because I allowed myself to be vulnerable in the moment and say, this is what it was for me when I was first kissed. I need to blush as now a mature woman. How do I bring those rosy cheeks to the camera in front of an audience, in front of spectators? By bringing childhood, the gift in my life with those people from my childhood, my teenage years, and embracing it and considering them jewels, gifts that I have to construct what I need to in the future portrayals. But at the same time, why can't we do that even if we don't have to portray a character? Why can't we allow ourselves to go back to those beautiful moments of youth and innocence and say, you know what? I am already something extraordinary, even if I don't feel it right now because that little girl, that innocent girl is still inside of me. So I need to protect her. I can't beat her down the way that I'm beating myself down right now, that I haven't done enough, that I'm not successful enough. Because when I'm beating myself down, the adult, when I'm saying you're not sufficient, you're not enough, you could have done more, what's wrong with you? You're saying the same things to that innocent girl that was maybe 15 years old. Imagine her in front of you. If I'm imagining that girl in front of me, I was wearing this dress that comes to mind right now. It's a beautiful red dress and it has white polka dots and that's coming back into fashion. But it was a red dress and it had short sleeves and it had white polka dots and I had a very small waist and I was tall and I don't think that I found myself to be very attractive. I think I kind of thought that I was ugly and my sister was the beautiful one. But if I look at her right now, just acknowledging what I just acknowledged to you right now, I didn't find myself to be that beautiful. I want to say, you are beautiful. You were beautiful all along. I just wish that, I just wish that somebody in your life knew that that's what you needed to hear. And again, just because the people in our life don't know what we need in the moment, that doesn't make them bad. But right now, going back to that beautiful girl in the red with white polka dot dress outside the fence and being kissed for the first time and that joy of youth coming in can also bring a little bit of I don't know tears in my eyes but it doesn't mean that I'm sad about it it means that it's teaching me right now as an adult to be kinder to myself so instead of saying you're not enough you haven't done sufficiently you're not successful I can say you know what I would never do that to my younger self so why am I doing it to my present self no you're okay you're still trying to do. You haven't given up. The trying, the will to try one more time is already the doing, is already the succeeding in acting. So for as long as you don't give up, for as long as you're doing and you're evolving and you're sharing that what you know with others in hope that they can get something from it, you're doing. You're great. How do you take that? How do you take that? I'm asking you out there. Can you deal with the fact that you are extraordinary and saying I am extraordinary without apologizing for sounding arrogant. No apology. 